So this video, we're going to show you how to set up um, a FIRST LEGO League or a FIRST Tech Challenge event using the audio system that comes with FIRST. As you can see in, from the video here, we've got two speakers. We've got a uh, projection screen. You can see the projector on the tripod in the center. And then uh, two tables. The two tables uh, form the AV and sort of control center for the whole thing. Okay, so here are the two tables. We've set up this table. Uh, it, these are actually part barrier, part work table. We'll leave this table for the FTAs and the uh, referees. Um, this is the AV table. You can see that we put the tripod right in the middle between two tables. Um, when you go to set it up, be, if you're careful, you can see how we managed to put the legs of the tripod under the tables so that nobody will trip on them. It's also important to keep all of the cables as tidy and as far into the table as you can because the students will trip on just about anything. Ready? So um, here is the really, really simple basic AV setup. There's a computer here for First Lego League or First Tech Challenge. This would probably be the scoring computer. Um, and there are cords that head up to the projector. Uh, right next to it is the audio board. The audio board is going to control um, the wireless microphone and, uh, and or wired mics. It also takes audio from the computer to run the game timers and such. Um, this is really, really easy to set up. Let's walk through it real quick. So this is one of our audio boards. We have a bunch of different sizes. They all work almost exactly the same. So uh, setting them up is almost uh, identical between them. Some just have more channels than others. To hook one of these up, um, set it in a nice place. I usually keep it towards the back of the table. You can start by um, grabbing the power. This is just a standard uh, PC sort of power cord. You plug that in. So uh, this cable has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack like you'd see on an iPhone. On the other side of it are two quarter inch audio plugs. So um, to plug in the audio, you use that, that cord with the quarter inch jacks. Uh, Pick one of the line in channels. On this board, it happens to be channels five and six. The red one goes in the right. The gray one goes in the left. This end is going to go over to the computer. So these are the XLR cables. The ends of these cables go off to our speakers. You should have the female ends at the audio board. The male ends go on the speakers. They're going to plug in right here on the back of the board. The next thing we're going to hook up is one of our mo wireless microphone units. Uh, the, the, we have two sizes. I'm not sure which size you've got, but they work almost identically. Um, uh, this one actually has two receivers in it, and I can tell that on the back. I can see two audio outputs. These plug into the, uh, the mixer board using these, the shorter XLR patch cables. Um, you, you'll either have 18 inch or three footers, um, but it all works exactly the same. To plug these in, Put the female ends in there. The male end goes over here to channel one. And this channel will go to channel two. So this audio board looks complicated, but it really is actually a lot simpler, simpler than you'd think. There are, uh, this one has to have eight channels. There are four microphone inputs and then the auxiliary imports, inputs for audio and such. Now you can break this whole thing down into individual channels. So I'm, if you follow down, this is channel one, there's channel two. All of, the, uh, all of the knobs are the same for each one of these channels. All right, so we're going to start at the top and work our way down. Here is our microphone input. We also could have used a line input, but we're not doing that here. Um, the next button down is called low cut. If you're finding that there's a whole bunch of, of low rumbly noises coming out of the, the microphone, you can actually turn this on or off. Oh, we'll leave that one on. This is the gain control. The gain control controls how much uh, preamplification gain happens with the mic. If you don't know what that means, uh, you can basically set it in the zero uh, position or, or the middle position. You can see that the little indent is facing at the 12 o'clock position. The next one is called the compressor. That uh, helps eliminate feedback. Again, we're going to leave that in the 12 o'clock position as well. The next three positions are called equalizers. They control the high, mid, and uh, low ranges. Um, a good place to start is just put them all in the middle. The auxiliary sends we're not going to use, so you can turn this one all the way to the left um, so that it's in the off position, and same thing with the effects. You'll want to make sure that the balance is centered, which is, again, in the, in the up position. There are uh, two or three more controls. Uh, this is the mute button. If I push this button, um, 
the, uh, and I'm going to turn the board on. So if I push this button, the, this microphone is now muted. I can unmute it by turning it off. Um, there's another one called a solo button, which will turn on the red light. That'll help you uh, set volume levels and such. For the most part, you can actually make sure that that red light is off. The last one is the uh, volume adjustment for this specific channel. Um, uh, you'll you'll um, generally want to keep this at zero or below. If you're going above zero, you're starting to amplify things and you're likely to get a little bit of distortion. Now, um, if we zoom out just a little bit, you can see that, that uh, the next channel is an identical copy to that. In fact, actually the next four channels are exactly those uh, controls for each of those channels. On the right side of the board, you'll find the uh, main audio controls. It's called main mix. It will take all of the other channels, uh, the, all of their levels, and it will adjust all of them proportionally. So this is the main volume control. Again, you want to try and stay below the zero mark. Um, anything above the zero mark, we're, we're actually amplifying, and, it, and we can get a little bit of distortion that way. Um, uh, you can turn all of the microphones off or, or turn them up just like that. Um, there's a whole bunch of effects controls up here. You can safely ignore all of those. They shouldn't get in your way. So um, this is one of the microphone receivers. It has two channels. Um, it turns out that this microphone is keyed into this channel at the moment. You can see a channel number here. Uh, it's currently set to channel number three. Um, this body pack unit, um, if I, uh, there's a couple of pinchers here. I can open the door. There's a battery. That 9 volt battery does tend to need to be replaced at least once during a day. Um, there's an on off button on the top. Um, now it is currently on, and I can tell that it's on because uh, on this channel I can see that there's a, uh, the ready light. If I pick up this microphone and speak into it, you can hear it in the background a little bit, but you can also see that that audio light is coming on. That means that it's actually receiving audio. Um, if for some reason you can't get this to work, first thing to check is that the three matches up with this guy's uh, channel number. You can find its channel number by opening the door and pressing and releasing uh, the channel button at least once. And here you can see that it's set to three. Um, if you have an interfering radio or if those numbers don't match, you can change either one of these to match the other unit. So there are uh, two styles of headsets that we're using. Most of us will be using this style. Um, contrary to popular belief, they don't go on like this. They actually go on behind your ears, like, like so, um, and, and behind the head. Um, to use these appropriately, we want to get the microphone down just below the corner of somebody's mouth so that they aren't breathing straight into it. Um, if they are breathing straight into it, you'll hear a whole bunch of wind noises and you may need to go adjust it for them. Um, you can adjust these a little bit to fit whoever's head it is. Uh, generally, they actually work pretty good and, and they don't seem to fall off. Now, operating the uh, remote unit is really pretty simple. Um, uh, if, if you press the button once, that green light will come on. Um, if they press it again, orange light comes on. An orange light means that the microphone is currently in standby. It is connected to the receiver, but it's currently not transmitting. Um, so the MC can hit that on and hit that off. Um, some of our microphones actually have a small switch on top uh, that turns the power on and off. And if, if they have that style, um, they, they do the same thing. They just turn the, the microphone on and off. There's a slight delay on the ones with the switch on it. Um, it works fine, but they'll get, they'll get used to how to do that. Um, if this light starts to flash between orange and red, that means that the battery is starting to die and it'll need to be replaced soon. Your kit should have a couple of extra 9 volt batteries. If not, somebody may even run down to the store and pick up a few. So um, this is one of our powered speakers. Uh, it, it has its own built-in amplifier, and so uh, it makes it really easy for us to use. There are two connections that we need to worry about. One of them is the PC power connection, which is uh, right there. There should be a 25-foot cable in your kit. These, these speakers actually can daisy-chain, so there's, um, there are two inputs and one thing called a link output. You're going to be wanting to use the input side of this, so you take the XLR cable and you simply plug it in. Um, the levels, I usually set the, uh, um, the uh, uh, audio level to point it just beyond the E of the line word uh, on this dial. Um, and that seems to be a pretty safe place to put it. I also leave the, uh, the equalizer, I just leave those in the 12 o'clock position. Um, these are sitting on tripod speaker stands. Um, before I uh, extend these up, I'm going to turn on the power. You should see a red light for a moment, and the green power light should stay on. 
Um, our tripods use a locking mechanism. Um, you can see that there's a small arrow. The, this one's currently in the lock position. There are three positions it can go in, lock, raise, and lower. Um, uh, Lock, it shouldn't move. If I put it in raise, it will only go up. It won't come down. And that allows me to lift up a heavy load in small increments and make the speaker go up. Um, if I need to bring it down, I usually grab the, uh, the upper part, the upper uh, uh, bar, and you turn this knob way over into the lower position, and it will eventually, eventually start to lower on you. I'm, you have to keep friction on this or it will fall, um, but you can now lower this and it will help you on the way down. And if you get it to a position where you want it, you just turn it to lock and it will now stay still and it also doesn't turn. So we normally would raise these speakers um, all the way up to the top of the screens or as far up as it'll go. It's about nine feet up um, and uh, that gets it out of people's earshot. Make sure that you've turned this to the lock position when you're done um, and then also dress the cables a little bit so that they're not, uh, uh, they're not in, a way, in the way or a uh, tripping hazard. Uh, in general, if, if you think that somebody's gonna trip on a cord, they probably will. Um, we should have sent you a bunch of these uh, cable covers. They're called yellow jackets. Um, this is, these are the two channel ones. To put these together, there's some, uh, there are keyed ends. And you can put these together like this. Flip open the door and you can take these cables and run them right down the middle. Um, generally, we, we use um, prioritize so that the cable covers um, will be there for the public. Um, or anywhere that people will be walking in mass. Um, that way they, uh, that way as people shuffle along, they don't need to constantly look down to see if there's something under their feet. Um, always make the assumption that if there's a cable laying on the floor, somebody's going to trip on it and um, do whatever you can to mitigate that. Okay, so we've already got our audio hookup. Now, um, to hook up the projector to uh, our laptop, we have two options. Uh, we're sending you uh, an HDMI cable and a VGA cable. Um, uh, it doesn't matter which one that you use. In this case, we're gonna hook up the uh, HDMI cable to the side of the computer, and the other end of it is gonna be hooked up to the projector. Uh, once you get the, uh, the uh, projector hooked up, if you hit the Windows uh, P button, um, and then click on extend. What that will do is it'll set the computer to extend the monitors, which is exactly what you want. Um, if you're using one of our projectors uh, on, on a tripod, um, this is a, these are pretty powerful little projectors. Um, we have this one currently set up to project upside down, which means that once we get it going, we're gonna raise it so that it projects from the top of the screen down. Uh, one of the first things you'll need to remember to do is to open up the lens cover with this little sliding uh, door. And then on the back side, so here we've got the power is already connected. And uh, for this guy, we're going to plug in the HDMI port, um, which is uh, going over to the scoring computer. Now that we're ready, I think we can turn this guy on. And so we'll, we'll turn on the power. Um, the, all of our projectors usually come with a remote as well. That makes it a little more convenient for turning things on and off when it's nine feet up in the air. Um, if your computer has a VGA output, we should have also included a long VGA cable for you. Um, on ours, we usually use Computer One, so you can just plug that in up here and run that over to your uh, scoring computer. So before we uh, before we send the uh Start again. Before we send the projector skyward, we're just going to check to make sure that it focuses properly and that um, that our stand is far enough back to actually fill the whole screen. So now we're ready to raise this thing again with, with these tripods. I'm going to put it in the raised position. And with the, I just go ahead and leave the projector on and go ahead and raise it all the way up. And you should be able to align the top of the screen uh, with the, the top of the image, lock it, and we're now ready to go. So I just wanted to spend a minute to tell you about how to properly put cables away. Uh, this one, you can see that the, this cable is actually in pretty tough shape. And there's a, there's a reason for that, and it's a very common reason that we'd like you to avoid. What happened with this cable was that uh, somebody did your dad's garage style uh, wrapping of a cable, which was to go like this. And they managed to uh, um, get this 
started nicely, but what ends up happening is the inside of the cable gets all twisted, just like this guy. And uh, this cable's almost unusable at this point because we can't get it to lay flat anymore. So uh, please don't do that. The biggest no-no and the one that will, uh, that will destroy more things is to do the ar around the arm trick. So let us show you exactly how to do it properly. So uh, one of the first things that I do is I like to lay the cable out um, as flat as I can. And I'm walking along and just to make sure that it isn't terribly twisted in any one spot um, and that it looks like it's trying to lay flat. Um, and so once I've got all of the kinks out of it, uh, I'm gonna start by uh, making a loop. Um, this is the, here's the one time that you may do the arm trick is you want your loop actually to be about that big, okay? So now as I'm dragging this cable along, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the loop size even, and as I'm going, I'm starting to twist, I'm, I'm rolling the cable a little bit to get it to form a nice loop. Now, every now and then, um, you can, you'll be able to feel this as it's going. Sometimes you actually need to reverse the loop and come in the other way. And so I'm turning it 180 degrees to make the loop. And what that does is that gives the twist somewhere to go. So we're only giving anything about a half a twist at the most on its way in. And this really doesn't take any very much longer than the old arm trick. And honestly, it's a lot easier on your arms to do. It's also much nicer on the cable. Um, we appreciate everyone's zeal to do all sorts of famous uh, sailor cord wraps and electrician cord wraps, but the reality is uh, none of those store efficiently and uh, they usually just end up making a mess of things. So uh, please feel free to, to just use this simple looping method. Uh, most, most of our cables uh, usually have a Velcro strap on them. Please use that Velcro strap um, as, as, you're, uh, as you're working, putting things away. Uh, it makes it much easier for us to deal with the cables when they're all in a box.